Obi Oberholzer is a photographer, writer, and self-proclaimed visual thug and vagabond who's recently launched his new photographic book titled Happy uh, Sandland, Southern African Stories. The body of work pages through Obi's life on the road along carefree ways devouring the diesel of the unpredictable and the dust of the haphazard uh, through a collection of situations, incidents, thoughts, and self-humor. Now, to tell us more, we're joined on Zoom by Obi himself uh, to talk more about his new body of work. Obi Oberolza, good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. Tell us more about this project and the inspiration behind it. Well, the inspiration uh, came from, from long, long ago. So, as you can see, I'm very old. And I've been doing this for taking pictures for 50, almost 60 years. So um, life without uh, uh, inspiration or enthusiasm for me as a photographer is nothing. So with a lot of enthusiasm for country, places, people, uh, I've uh, journeyed around in uh, Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to know more? <laughs> yeah. I'll unpack uh, for us the title of the book. And how did you come up with this title? Well, do you want me to be really honest? Yeah, <laughs> I hope you're honest. Um, you know, we live in this, this country of tremendous contrasts, um, from black to white to brown to yellow to pink to, to green to everything. And uh, in, this, in this wonderful country of ours, things go wrong and things go right. So just imagine in the morning, you're going to put the lights on and it's load shedding. So you just shake your head. Uh, if you want to maybe uh, put out the rubbish and the rubbish van doesn't arrive, so you just shake your head. So I had to come up with um, a title of a book. You know, I've got quite a few uh, coffee table books, wine table books. Uh, and I thought of, I I'd like to show this, this shake your head and laugh. Uh, so uh, to me, this country, wonderful S S South Africa, I use the title Happy Sad Land because there's such huge contrast of poverty, of too rich, too poor, and so on. That was my initial uh, thought about this title, Happy Sad Land. Mm. How did you decide on the pictures and stories to include in the book and which ones to leave out? Oh, that's a very good question. You know, after all these, these years of traveling, uh, I've come to realize to put it simply, I can see a picture before I take it. So I've always got this sort of built-in computer. So if I look around and travel the country roads, travel this country, then I know when to take a picture, if it has any feeling, if it has any impact. So I don't just go around snapping pictures. I really work. And if I feel I have something important to say, be it even a landscape, be it a hut on a hill, be it a big mansion, I, I'll know what inside me when to take the picture. Mm. Now, you say that uh, freedom often is not quite knowing where you're going. Tell us more about what you mean by this. Well, you know, freedom is, is if you come to this T-junction on this road and you stop and the road goes to the left and the road goes to the right. Now, freedom is like saying, well, I don't know, I'll just go left. But for me, being in my bucky all these years and traveling through sunny South Africa, uh, when I get home and when I look, I always dangle my arm out of the, the, the car window, the bucky window. So if I come back home and I see that my right arm is browner, is darker than my other arm, I know I'm free. Mm. <laughs> now, you know, uh, as a uh, self-proclaimed visual thug and vagabond, uh, when you look at all the places you've been, which one left a lasting impression and visual memory for you? You know, that is a trick question. I knew you were going to come. You know, <laughs> personally, I, I don't have a favorite place because I make believe, I conjure up, I believe that every place I go to, I find something special. But, you know, I have places like maybe Ludritz in Namibia or Honda Club Bay or places like that. But as I said, it's my job or it's, it lies in my character and personality to find out the best or the sad or the glad in each place. So my favorites lie 
down all the country roads, down all the roads of, of Southern Africa. Mm. For someone who's never seen or experienced your work, what does, you know, Obi's photographic studio look like? There's not, there's not much, a couple of my books, a couple of old cameras, a wife that down uh, over our yard is making a nice lunch. You know, uh, I think my studio, my experiences are in my head, in memories, because photography really is just a album of looking back. So I can look back and I've, I've forgotten many things that I've come to in the past, but if I look at a photograph, I know exactly the time of day, the lighting and the people. So it's just a historic uh, uh, album for me. So I, I don't have much in my studio, like I said. Mm. Now, you recently exhibited some of your most favorite body of work and that, uh, you know, coincided with the launch of this book. Tell us more about how that went. Well, you know, I'm not the kind of person or a photographer that clings to my work. For me, it's a journey. For me, it's taking something, remembering it, maybe sharing it with, with people. So I could do many best work. So for me, it's not my finding my best work. It's finding a journey or finding some sort of um, experience that's important for me. Mm -hmm. What do you, how would you describe this part of your journey where uh, you're releasing books and given, you know, uh, and you compare that with a young Obi Oberosa and the, the one that I'm having a conversation with right now, what is this period called? How would you describe it? Uh, oh, getting older. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but not like uh, Clint Eastwood said, don't let the old man in. It's, it's self-belief and May I just share with your viewers that I think one of the most important mid-travelers or fellow travelers for me is a sense of humor. I don't think that you can exist in, in this Southern Africa without a sense of humor. A, laughing at yourself and finding different situations interesting. So in my heyday, when I was dark and tall and handsome, <laughs> I used I used to live far wilder. I, I, I used to sleep outside. I used to do things that we can't share on uh, on national television. But uh, but uh, now I've calmed down. But I've also learned. I've learned a lot about how to look. And it's obviously for, for photographers now that even you and everybody is a photographer uh, is to find something to isolate for impact. So my life of looking are just highlighted by my best shots I've done along the road. And it's all important along this road. And we all travel along a certain road. And I was very lucky as a young boy to start believing in photography. I found my niche. I found my homecoming long, long ago. So maybe uh, I'll find some happiness one day down that road. Yeah. Obi, you know what? Congratulations on the book. Thank you for sharing your craft with us. Uh, that's photographer and writer Obi Obolosa, and he's been speaking to us about his recently launched book. It's a photo book, in fact, it's called Happy Sadland Southern African Stories.